This is the story of Air India Express Flight 611. On the 11th of October 2018, a Boeing 737-800 was on the ground at Trichy, India, bound for Dubai. The plane had 130 passengers on board and six crew members, which brought the total to 136 people on board. The same pilots had flown the same aircraft from Dubai to Trichy, and they would be the ones flying it back to Dubai. But before that, the pilots had to inspect the plane and make sure that it was airworthy and safe. By 7.25 p.m. UTC, the pilots had accepted the plane, and they were making preparations for the departure to Dubai. In the cockpit, the pilots were busy calculating the best departure profile for Flight 611. They had two runways to work with, runway 09 and runway 27. They calculated takeoff data for both runways. Eventually, runway 27 won out. It was the easier departure and the wind slightly favored a departure from runway 27. After calculating their V1, VR, and V2 speeds, the pilots started taxiing the plane and took the plane to the threshold of runway 27. Once all the checklists had been done, the pilots pushed the throttles to toga power. The first officer verified that thrust had been set correctly, and the pilot scanned the instruments as the plane started to pick up speed. 80 knots called the first officer as the plane sped down the runway. As the 737 was passing through 117 knots, the captain's seat recliner collapsed, causing the captain to fall back. At this point, no one was controlling the plane. The captain's hands were off the control column and the thrust levers. Unknown to everyone, the falling captain had accidentally set the throttles to 78% by accident. Before he could even get up, the captain shouted, Your controls! Signaling to the first officer that he was the one in charge. As the first officer took control of the plane, the captain was fiddling with the seat, trying to fix it. And within five seconds, he was back in the seat. As the captain looked out of the cockpit window, he knew that they were in the last 2,000 feet of runway, and the plane still hadn't even hit their V1 speed of 143 knots. The captain took control back of the plane and pushed the throttles to max power. With 1,000 feet of runway remaining, the plane was starting to close in on their V1 speed. Soon after that, the pilots pulled back on the yoke to lift the plane into the air. The pilots felt that the plane was slow to respond, but the nose did come up ever so slowly. As the plane started to lift off, the pilots felt that the plane was vibrating as if it was being buffeted by weight turbulence. But their altitude slowly began to climb. They had taken off by the smallest of margins. In the cabin, a loud thud was heard, and the crew members just assumed that it was some of the baggage down below being moved around by the takeoff. But in the control tower, the controller noticed that the ILS localizer for runway 09 was out of commission. Seconds after the takeoff, a call came in from a perimeter guard. He had seen the plane fly through a wall that encircled the airport. As flight 611 climbed away from Trichy, ATC informed the pilots that they had flown through the localizer antennas and a brick wall. The pilots just replied with, Okay, sir, thank you. Knowing that they had flown through a wall, the pilot stabilized the plane at 21,000 feet and then cycled the gears, tested the hydraulic pressurization and engine systems to make sure that the plane was well and truly okay. Nothing seemed wrong, so the pilots decided to continue the flight to Dubai. As the plane flew on to Dubai, inspections of the damaged wall and antennas showed a significant amount of aircraft skin on them. So, when flight 611 was nearing Muscat, they got the call to divert to Mumbai. The pilots crunched some numbers and came to the conclusion that they would only be able to make it to Mumbai with the fuel that they had remaining if they were given a direct routing to Mumbai. ATC gave the pilots what they asked for, and so Flight 611 made a beeline across the ocean direct to Mumbai. Soon after that, Flight 611 made an uneventful straighten approach to Mumbai's runway 09. All on board were safe. Looking at the plane after landing, it was immediately clear that this plane should not have made a flight across the Indian Ocean. For example, the landing gear had wire mesh stuck to them, the tires had sustained damage, and a significant amount of aircraft skin had been stripped away from the plane. Even the horizontal stabilizers had sustained some damage. Even though everything in the cockpit indicated that this plane was fine, 
this 737 had sustained some heavy damage. Boeing apparently does know how to build a tough plane. The investigators then looked at the takeoff itself. And due to the weird nature of this incident, the investigators brought in an anthropometric expert, or someone that specializes in the measurement of the human body. They were all able to ascertain that the captain would have had his left hand on the control column and his right hand on the thrust lever when the seat collapsed. Since the captain had the throttles in his hand, he accidentally pulled the engines back to 77% from 98 when he fell back. As weird as this sounds, there is a checklist for this. Well, there isn't a your captain seat collapse, here's what you do checklist, but there is a pilot incapacitation checklist. If you think about it, this is pilot incapacitation in a way, and as part of that checklist, the first officer had to make sure that all the knobs and switches were where they were supposed to be. But the first officer did not do that, probably because this was just so unexpected, and he was just surprised. Due to that, the throttles remained at 77% for an extended period of time. Because of that, the acceleration of the plane began to taper off. Even when the captain was back in the driver's seat, he still didn't notice that the engines were at a lower power setting. The captain's focus was directed outside the airplane. They were running out of runway, and he just didn't realize that the engines weren't at max power. Because of this, the plane struggled to get off the ground when the pilots pull back on the yoke. During this takeoff, the crew had basically three options to deal with this emergency. To see how effective each one of those options were, they tried each scenario in a simulator. The first scenario that they tried was the first officer rejecting the takeoff five seconds after the captain had fallen over. The simulation showed that they did have enough runway to stop. However, in the second scenario, they tried a rejected takeoff after the captain had gotten back in his seat. Now, that would have resulted in a runway overrun. But what would have happened if the captain added power right as he got back in his seat? That simulation showed that the plane would have been able to take off with no issues whatsoever. No crash, no runway overrun, no nothing. So this accident ultimately came down to them not noticing that their engines had accidentally been set to a lower power setting. The thing I don't understand is why the first officer didn't just reject the takeoff when the captain had fallen over. The flight data recorder showed that the first officer maintained directional control while the captain was down, but pretty much nothing else. In my opinion, he should have just been like, you know what, this is too weird, let's just try again. Also, why did the higher-ups ask Flight 611 to divert to Mumbai when they were already over Muscat? Why make this badly damaged plane fly all the way to Mumbai, all over the ocean, when there were multiple other options nearby? Wouldn't it make more sense to land somewhere in the Middle East instead of asking the plane to fly across an entire ocean and then landing in Mumbai? If you have the answer to any of those questions, feel free to leave them below. Now for the last question that we need to answer. Why did the captain's seat collapse? The reclining mechanism in the captain's chair was rigged up too tight, which caused the recliner to move back uncommanded. The really interesting thing is that Boeing even has maintenance checklists for things as mundane as chairs on the 737. That's not something that you usually think about, is it? But in the end, the story of Flight 611 did not end in disaster, by the smallest of margins. If the 737 had been just a little bit lower, the engines would have taken the brunt of the impact and they would have most definitely failed. They were definitely lucky that day. Do you think that this could have ended worse for Flight 611? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.